Mary Jane Smith started Unity House in 1971 to address some of the challenges of people living in poverty in Troy. Nearly 40 years later, the organization and its job continues. Mary Jane, could you please tell us a little bit about what homelessness looked like when Unity House began? Well, Unity House began in 71 uh, as a result of my having lived in the area from 68 on, and that the area was the poverty area of Troy. And my recollection of, the, of my earliest experiences was seeing uh, a lot of people were homeless uh, because maybe the husband ran out or a job was lost or um, the house collapsed around them because there was so much poor housing. But the thing in those earlier days and the people I knew best were they would take one another in. So I don't remember seeing the homelessness on the street, but they were homeless and their condition was not great. But there were, uh, and there still is among poor people a real generosity of helping one another out. Mm -hmm. But certainly there's a need for organizations. Oh, absolutely. Um, as I began to get full time, I had been a teacher and I started Unity House July 1st, 71, and got full time and my other co workers with me and opened the doors to a, you might say, a community center. Then we saw um, all kinds of things, like it was in the earliest days of deinstitutionalization when people were let out, and I use the word loosely, of um, uh, mental institutions by the state. Oh, you should be in the community. Yeah, that was really nice, but you go out in the community after living in an institution and there were a few services, it was a very sorry sight. And then um, a couple of women came by who had been severely beaten by their husbands. They had no place to go. And they couldn't live with their neighbors because they would be found out and probably beaten again. So we took them into Unity House offices is where they actually stayed. We did have a little kitchen and a bathroom and a shower. And that got us more awakened to uh, how big the problem was. And so eventually we got into uh, starting programs for people with mental illness that still exists. There are many, many programs at Unity House for those folks. And uh, then we got into uh, putting up a place uh, for women who were victims of domestic violence, it's called a shelter. I never liked that word, but I'd rather say a house because it is a nice little house and there's a bigger one coming now. And then eventually got in to work with people with AIDS. So those are a lot of really positive things that came out of the start of that. Right. What are some of the other things that are happening around homelessness in Troy? Oh, there's a lot now. When we first started out, I don't think, that, uh, to my best of my knowledge, there was any other agency working with uh, homeless people, poor people, you know, as programs. But now. Fortunately, there are many, not enough, but we have Joseph's House, which does a wonderful job of homeless people for a night or a week or a month and transitional populations. And then we have the YWCA that houses um, homeless women and their families. And then we have all the various Unity House programs. But even with those, it's not enough. But we're very fortunate to have in this city a program I think started last year by the churches in Troy, um, where volunteers from those churches uh, receive people into their properties at night. And this program is called In From the Cold. And it's a wonderful thing and it'll be starting again for this year. And so if someone wanted to help people affected by homelessness in Troy, what are things they could do? Well, they could volunteer at all of the programs I just mentioned. There are many opportunities that way. Uh, another program that might be of interest to people is the Deuteronomy Fund at Unity House. That's a fund that my husband and I started about 10 years ago. 
uh, that is used exclusively for the unmet needs of poor people. You know, there's some money that can be gotten from welfare, from Social Security or unemployment and so forth, but there are many unmet needs that there's no funding for. And I realized that in my years of working. So after I retired and my husband retired, we decided to start this fund and people have been giving to it ever since. The sad thing is I met recently with Chris Burke, my successor at Unity House, and I discovered that last year alone, and I think that's probably the calendar year to July to July, that out of the Deuteronomy Fund, over 22,000 went out to pay for a security rental for people. They, they might get money from welfare to get an apartment, but there often isn't security deposits. Or maybe people are going to be evicted because they haven't got the money for a particular month. Um, so that fund paid out over $22,000 just last year. The fund is down to very low amounts now. Mm -hmm. And the nice part of that fund is the money goes directly to people. No money is taken out for staff or for administration. Mm -hmm. So donating to that fund is good, or donating to Joseph's House or to the Y, or, or volunteering are all good opportunities. And lastly, could you think of some way if you were, um, I don't know, in a coffee shop or something and somebody said something very negative about homelessness, mm -hmm. how do you think we can combat that kind of stereotyping in daily life? Good luck. <laughs> it isn't easy because people have fixed emotions. The best thing I can think of is to see, try to associate or get to know somebody who's homeless and understand why they're homeless, kind of walk in their shoes if it's possible. That's one thing. Or if you can't, that isn't always an easy thing to do too because you don't want to invade people's privacy. But sometimes you can get an opportunity. Another thing is to watch what's going on in government, both local and nationally, and get involved in things. Uh, there is a famous case in Troy, but I won't go into that, but uh, there is affordable housing money that's put out every year by the federal government. Much comes to the states, some to the localities. Now, always it's, well, the poor get everything. They're handed everything on a silver platter. Well, the ironic thing is that the majority of money that's given out by the government for housing goes to the middle class or the more affluent. There is some, but not anywhere near enough for, for poor people. So get on the computer, go into Google and see what legislation might be coming up or what state or federal programs exist for the um, poor people and then see that those things, that money lands here and something is done with it. Very simple to do. Thanks, Mary Jane. And you're welcome, Amy. Thanks for tuning in to the People's Forum. Please come back to the sanctuary where we'll have more guests talking about issues no one wants to discuss.